What a classic song there from Keith Pringle. How many remember that one? My faith is not in man. It's definitely in the Lord. And I could truly say that. And I'm sure uh, this dear uh, brother that I have on the telephone could say that too, because he's headed to Ghana to do missionary work that God has called him to do. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I want to welcome this, this gentleman that I met yesterday. And I told him when I was talking with him that I feel in my spirit, I need to have him on my show. And this is a special tonight that's going to rebroadcast. And those of you that can see the live video on Facebook and YouTube, hello to you. I want to welcome, ladies and gentlemen, this powerful missionary who's making a difference. I want to welcome Michael D. Clicks to FMHDMS. Hey. How you doing this evening? I'm good. What's up, Mr. Feel Good Man? I'm feeling good now that I got you on the line. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing blessed. I'm blessed. Great. You know, I just want to say it was a delight. And, and I'm going to say it's an honor because uh, for you to be able to be on my show because you could be anywhere else tonight. I know you were up in New York and you said you were not going to miss this moment with Simone Malone. And I thank oh, you so absolutely. much. <laughs> I thank you so much for joining us. But before we talk about what God has called you to do, I want people to get an understanding who you are as an individual because you didn't just grow up like a normal kid. That's for sure. When you testified yesterday, man, I was touched by your testimony and I see why God is using you across the country i want you to tell everybody a little bit about who in the world who in the world tell everybody it's michael <laughs> declicks yeah hey amen well i give god the glory thank you so much brother um when i was four years old my father had left and by god's grace i have forgiven him and god has definitely uh allowed that to be something that has been under the blood of jesus christ but when i was four years old i know there's a lot of people out there who can testify with me being in a broken home. Mm. But when you're four years old, you don't know what that's like, you know? So going through that lifestyle, being six years old, then having a new stepfather who is Puerto Rican, and yeah, I'm a Caucasian male, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you could tell by my voice or whatnot, but <laughs> I'm a through and through Caucasian white, but I grew up in an urban culture with a Hispanic stepfather. Mm-hmm which means I grew up around that Hispanic culture, and so I find myself, without volunteering myself, in a minority group. Wow. I was trying to find pleasure and acceptance and approval in my own culture, mm -hmm. and in high school and in, oh, man, mm. all throughout my life, I could not find acceptance. Wow. So, so then I found myself going through the motions of trying to be accepted, and though I had an ex stepfather, which yes. now is no longer my, my stepfather, mm -hmm. unfortunately, but I'm thankful that, you know, I've also, you know, uh, asked God to forgive him and also just found that peace in my heart. I grew up in that culture and they, they loved me all right, but I still felt disconnected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And exactly. what I realized now as a son of the living God is that I did not have Christ in my life to mm. bring that emptiness mm -hmm. full again. Yeah. So I found myself being so caught up in, in the motions, and growing up in an urban culture, I started to dress the part, act the part, listen to that music. I was in the era of, of you know, Eminem and 50 and Nas <laughs> and all those things, and a white guy right, listening right. to rap music. It, it's, it's something that we don't look at anymore, right. but man, back in the 90s, it was not a good look. It <laughs> right. was, I look back at those pictures, it was not a good look, man. Wow. But wow. I'm thankful to look at those pictures and say, that man is dead. Yeah, yeah. He's dead because he has Christ in him, right. the hope of glory. But before I knew Christ, I was so empty, mm. trying to find acceptance, finding myself now in the urban, in the black community, mm -hmm. in the urban community, and still, though they said, bro, I got your back, mm. they really didn't. Mm -hmm. They were doing it just to get their own game. Mm -hmm. Though I don't know what it was, at the end of the day, you realize that you were the one who were under their feet. Right, right. Because you were the minority. Right. And so, without Christ, up until 16 years old, I had no idea who I was. Wow. So, Michael, my question is, how did you get accepted? I mean, being the minority, how how did this transition happen and for you to get into the comfortness of interacting with other people? Well, the answer to that question simply, first, is through the love and power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. When I was 16, March of 2005, I was asked by a Puerto Rican, who was my cousin from my ex-stepfather's family, mm -hmm. to come to a youth group. Mm. So immediately, 
I was like, I'm going to be in a minority again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be in this place and feel so awkward. So why in the world would I go to a place that I would feel uncomfortable again? Right, right. You know why? I believe it's because God was calling me. Yes, yes. To know about his love in that day. And so then since that moment, James 4.14 says, what is your life? It's here like a vapor today and tomorrow it's gone. And that was a word that was spoken to me in March 2005, and that's when I gave my life to Christ. And since then, I have understood that in the middle of me being the minority, whether it is in the physical or in the spiritual, whether it is me going out ministering the gospel or me just sitting in my own house, Mm -hmm. I know that I have unity and I have a family in the house of God because of Jesus. That is wonderful. So growing up, you, you went on and, you know, you finished high school. You went on to what colleges that you attended? The University of Valley Forge. How, tell us about that experience, because that certainly opened up many doors for you as well. Go ahead. I can do that. But first, uh-huh. I got to let you know, man. Sure, go ahead. I graduated high school, but I dropped out really? before I went back. Wow. I did. I did. When I was 18 years old, mm-hmm. I was living for Jesus. And God, when I was 17, God touched me for missions. He said, you see these people dying around the world knowing about Jesus, and you're sitting here figuring out if you want to come to church? Wow. Those are the people that I'm burdening in your heart to go to. Mm. And so in that middle of that process, once I got called, Mm -hmm. the enemy started to come after me. Mm. I had a target on my head. And it got so deep in my heart about how you know, much of a struggle was to go to school. Mm-hmm. Man, school was hard. I don't know about y'all out there, but school is hard. <laughs> Some people out there just can't make it. And right. I was at that point. And right. I left school. Mm. And I said, Lord, I can't be used. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then through that process, God started to give me a passion for India and Africa. Mm-hmm. But then I turned 20 years old, man, and I was ready to go around the world and preach the gospel. Mm. And he said, go back to high school. Yeah. yeah. Talk about humbling. Yeah. But the Bible says in Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, as high as the heavens are above the earth. That's what it says. So are my ways and my thoughts higher than yours. Mm. That just meant that I need to trust God. Yeah. So I went back to high school, graduated, and then thinking I'm going to be done with higher education, God said, nope, mm-hmm. you're going to go to college. Mm-hmm. And that's where I found myself at Valley Forge. And God touched me so greatly there. Mm. Some of the most defining moments of my entire Christian walk. That is awesome. So when you went to college, you began to realize that this was a calling on your life for ministry and to reach many people across the country, in particular Africa, Absolutely. was definitely on your heart, uh, people of Africa. So what did you major in when you were in school? I majored in intercultural studies. Wow, wow. That's a fancy word for world missions. Okay. Going out and preaching the gospel. Wow. So you, you like to be politically correct out in, in here in America, but at the end of the day, Though my certificate may say something fancy, I know that it is about the Great Commission that tell people about Jesus. Absolutely. So how did you, uh, I I, I guess during your college years, you were developing yourself, so how did you become a missionary? Well, it's funny, my first day of college, Mm -hmm. now remember, I had this passion in my heart for India and Africa, and when I got to college, I lived with a man from India, Mm. Not just a guy who is Indian, but a guy who is not a resident of America. He actually comes to America from India for school. And then two guys from Africa, Mm. specifically Ghana, West Africa. And that's when I realized, Lord, this is real. This is nothing out in the blue. This is not an idea. God is not an idea. He's a real person who cares about me, who's watching my every move. And that's when I just began to realize that I not only had a talent that it's earthly, but a gift that yes. God from the heavens had given to me. Mm-hmm. Such a passion, such a desire to see people change, see wow. lives being changed, hearts being mended, mm-hmm. relationships being forgiven. And, and I'm just so thankful to see the opportunity mm-hmm. that God would give someone like me, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. broken, mm. even failing, even as a son of God. Yes, He just touched my life and said, Son, if you would only believe in me and realize that your faults are not the problem, it's you just saying yes. Wow. Wow. 
and doing what I've called you to do. And in those moments, I realized that when I said yes and I put my nose to the grind and I would just follow after his spirit and pray and be on my knees and, and even just step out by faith, man. Stepping out by faith is hard, but when you see the action and the fruit, when you pray for someone who you don't think can be healed and gets healed, when you see people get changed, when you see a light click in their head, like Peter saying, you are the Son of God. That's when I realized that God has a unique calling on my life to show others that they have a unique calling in their life as well. Michael, that, that's, that's, that's a, a mouthful right there. And I commend you for being obedient to the Holy Spirit and following what God has told you to do. So now you have graduated from that uh, college. And, and what, what, what did you start doing right after college? Did you, did you go right to Africa or what? Can you tell us about this transition and what happened? Yeah, definitely. Um, I went to Ghana last year, Okay. and I did not know that God was really calling me there. It was just a small moment, but when I got there, man, those people are mm. such amazing people, prayer warriors, oh. such loving. I mean, I could, it, man, it would bring me to tears if I could tell you about all the stories and how much they blessed my life, mm. that when I finally graduated uh, in May of this year, God had opened up a door that I did not expect in Ghana to become a pastor and an evangelist to minister to university students all around Ghana. Wow. And so I leave tomorrow night, yeah. August 10th, to go and live in Ghana for the next two years, and who knows how long after, to just pour into this generation to see them change not only Africa, mm. uh, but the entire world. That is incredible. Now, how did that happen? How how did you get that opportunity to be able to go there man, and pastor like that? Man, it is so random. I just met these two uh, American missionaries who've been in Ghana for the last 20 years, mm. didn't do ministry, met them one day from a connection from a friend from Valley Forge. Mm. You know, their daughter goes to Valley Forge, and I told them I'll be in Ghana. And so we met up, met their family, few months went by, it was April, and I get this email, and they said, we've been praying specifically for you, and we feel that God wants you to come here. In fact, there's a position opening up for you to take lead for a part of our ministry. Would you be interested? Wow. And that's when I realized, you know, I don't know about anyone out there who's mm-hmm. been trying to figure out what God's call is in their life, and you get so worried to the point that you start to pray and worry. Mm-hmm. And that makes no sense. We pray by faith, but praying in worry just does no good. And I just began to find such a peace in that moment because I was so worried before that moment. And I find myself so overjoyed at this very moment as I speak to you. There is no doubt in my mind that there is a God that is real yeah. and that there is only one God who is Jesus Christ. And I'm just so thankful that he would look at me and say, in your worry, yes. in your doubt, I already have a plan for you. Yeah. Wait and see. And when I saw that came about, they said, we want you. Mm. If you want to be part of us. You need to ask God and see if he says yes. Mm-mm-mm. And within days, I said, Lord, show me. And I could just feel this overwhelming as it made me cry, man. Yeah. I said, yes, Lord. Wow. Yes, Lord, I'll do it. And so here I am. A few months later, and I'm less than 24 hours away from being on a plane to wow. go start a new book Mm. that is empty that I can write so that men and women could read about the great things that God is doing. It has nothing to do with me, but God is using one like me, his Mm. son, his child, to just preach the gospel. I mean, that's what we're supposed to do, and that's what I'm doing, and I'm just so... I'm just so thankful for the Lord. I am I am very grateful for you and I'm I'm sitting here in my chair just thinking how God just opened up the windows and and gave you an opportunity because you humbled yourself and you spoke to him and he heard your voice and mm-hmm. and, and uh, you are now going to make a difference in touching so many people in Ghana. I have a lot of listeners and supporters from Africa and go ahead and say hello to those that can can hear this and and watch this video that are anticipating on meeting you because I've already gotten some texts, man, about you when they saw the picture on Facebook from mm-hmm. yesterday and Lord. said they want your number. They asked me to give you their number so you can connect with them. So I know mm-hmm. that is God divine for sure. So we're going to make sure you get that information. But say hello to mm-hmm. those people in Ghana, your brothers and sisters there, and tell them to get ready because you're coming. Amen. 
Amen. Well, my guys, my brothers, my sisters in Ghana, my middle name, my Ghanaian name is Tuesday Born. So I've already adopted myself as a Ghanaian. And I just want to tell you guys, God is so ready to take this nation of Ghana Mm. to such a place. It has nothing to do with me, guys. It has everything to do with what God is on the brink of doing in your life and in your culture. And I'm just thankful that God can actually use me to be part of what God's doing in your life. Mm -hmm. And I just want to team up as a body of Christ and just say, let's take over what you think has not been able to be taken over. Let's go to the next level, to the point that even people who are Christian will be able to say, I don't understand what's happening there. And they will either say one of two things. They will either say, that's crazy, and I'm not with that. Mm. Or they will say, whatever they're doing there, send it over our way Mm. to our country, to our people, because whatever God's doing, we need it. And I'm just, my brothers and sisters from Ghana, God is your Abba Father. Mm. And He loves you guys so much. I can only imagine all the great things that God is going to be doing and how much of a privilege and honor I have to actually be in the midst of some of you and see your life be changed so much so that you will want to change another and spark it within another to spread it to another and see not just Ghana, but the entire West African region be transformed potentially because of you. I believe that in my spirit that Ghana is at a unique position in, in, in your guys' life and in the region of Africa to change the course of so many countries around. So let's get ready. Let's team up. Let's be a brothers and sisters, family in Christ. Let's shame and slap the enemy in the face because mm-hmm. he has no authority over the sons and daughters of God. Greater is he mm-hmm. that is in us than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Let's Hallelujah. Get ready. Absolutely. We're going to pray for you today, too, for safe travels um, tomorrow, because I know it's going to be a very long flight, but God is going to guide you there safely. What I want to say to you now is if people want to pour into you, because I know these things are very costly. Um, I have supported people in Africa financially, and I'm, I'm asking uh, if people want to pour into your ministry, um, give that information how they can do that, because you are certainly making a difference. Go ahead. Absolutely. Thank you. If you need to donate, if you feel led, yeah. you can either give one time or you can give monthly. And for every single dollar, just imagine how much it can change the life of somebody. The money is going straight to give glory to God. Mm-hmm. You can just uh, go online to www.agapegospelmission.org mm-hmm. slash old slash donate. So that's www.agape. Mm-hmm. G-O-S-P-E-L-M-I-S-S-I-O-N dot org slash O-L-D old slash donate. And then my account number will be on there, 530 and Michael Clicks. Wonderful. And you'll be able to donate there. I have to raise uh, uh, $1,200 a month, Mm -hmm. and I'm believing just for that and even more because that money will be going straight to uh, not just uh, provide for uh, me being in the country and becoming a resident there, but also to just preach the gospel to all the uh, students and all the other people in Ghana. Amazing. We know that God is going to do that. Give that website one more time. Um, I'm going to make sure that I believe I have it here on the card so we can send Absolutely. a donation to you as well. Go ahead and give that website slowly because people who are watching and listening right here to Simone on this special exclusive interview, um, you need to support People are suffering and many are suffering in in Africa. And God has called this young man to go to Ghana to make a difference. I know from talking to different people from Ghana, their living conditions, they want a better life and it's our job. Yes, we got a lot to do at home, but also we need to reach those who are really lost. So go ahead and give that website information again to donate. Absolutely. It's www.agapegospel. M I S S I O N dot O R G slash O L D slash D O N A T E. My account number is 530, mm-hmm. and you'll see my name. It's a unique name, Michael Clicks, M Y K E L, last name K L 
I X. And if you want to find me on Facebook, just mm-hmm. take my first and last name, Facebook.com slash Michael Clicks. Mm-hmm. And if you want to email me so we can connect in Ghana, mm-hmm. please do. It's Michael, M Y K E L, at Agape Gospel Mission.org. Same as the mm-hmm. website that I gave you before. That is incredible. Do you want to say hello to anybody special? I know you're quite loved. We were just with Bishop uh, Cohen yesterday for the yes. uh, Master's Commission. What a great event. That's how I met you. But go ahead and say hello. This is your time to anybody special because I know you're quite loved. Yeah, definitely. I just want to give a shout out to my man, Bishop JT. Such an awesome time that we had. I know that that was definitely divine of why I'm even here on this radio station. I want to give a shout out to all my UVF students out there, specifically my man, John Keating Graves the pianist of the of the year of the mm-hmm. century. My man, the real MVP, David V. Cooper, check him out. He is an R and B gospel slash everything for Jesus singer. David Dash Cooper dot com. And every single person that has ever supported me out there, whether it be from City Reach Church in Reading or be my my guys in Ghana or my guys from the Bronx, I was just saying, thank you guys so much. You guys are amazing. And honestly, I could not do anything that I do for the Lord if it was not for support Mm -hmm. and just you saying, I believe in you. So thank you guys so much. You guys have been such a blessing, and I pray that God would bless you guys so much that you would have so much to give to another and see lives changed. Absolutely wonderful. I want to thank you so much for being here on the Songbook of Gospel. I felt led in my spirit to have you on tonight, and this is going to rebroadcast during the week as well. And we're going to make sure you message Simone that link because I'm going to put some money into that account for you. I am going to do that because it's all about helping one another because when we release what we have out of our hands into somebody else's hands, that can be a blessing. God will return that many times. I just believe that. Um, I had recently poured into a young man in Africa uh, who is trying to uh, go to college and and I told him I said I have a lot of expenses and he's been patient and he's been patient and if he's watching and listening he knows I'm talking about him I'm not going to say his name for confidentiality but um, when I trusted God with the seed that I gave Michael which was a sacrifice because I recently had you know being in business you have a lot of expenses and then i was in miami when i came back from miami michael my car needed some work and you know you got to have your car to get around to make money and to go you have to go but i trusted god all the way and i said i'm going to make this sacrifice and i I went to money gram this i went to money gram i know i got some haters out there say simone (laughs) sending money across the country and let me just testify and tell someone this, that yes, Lord. I planted that seed and that young man said to me, he said, let me tell you, Simone, I watch you. I listen to you. God is going to triple that money because you did this for me. Mm. Do you yep. know that it was tripled in two weeks? Man. So we have to have the faith and believe it. And I didn't mm. do it saying that God is going to triple the money. I just did it because I knew I felt in my spirit that it was time to bless this young man. And, and that's he, how you got to do it. That's yes, how you got to do it. There's absolutely. no reason to absolutely. look for a gift from God's hand to get something back from him. If we see his hand as just a money giver, yep. then that's not what we're going to get. If we look for his heart, yes. the reason why his hand reaches out, then we receive so much more yes. because our motive and our heart was right. Man, God bless you. That is such an amazing thing. Absolutely. That, that you, I, I believe that you just have a, an impact on so many people who listen mm-hmm. and even in the spirit of them and that is just amazing god bless you thank you so much so i want to touch and agree i want to pray for you mdk <laughs> i like that mdk i want to pray for you that god will give you safe travels and don't forget tonight to instant message me that link with your account so i don't have to look for it and i'm oh, going to sure. be, i'm going to be a blessing to you from fm hdms let's touch and agree father god i thank you for michael d Hallelujah. i thank you for allowing me to meet him yesterday God, this is a divine connection because God, you know that I've reached thousands of people through my ministry, those in India, those in Africa, God. And Lord, I ask you to guide him safely to Ghana. Let him change the lives through your anointing that people will fall under the Holy Spirit, God. And Lord, I ask you to speak to the lives and the hearts of people that are watching this, this interview, God, that they will want to 
pour into his ministry because mm-hmm. God, he is passionate about saving the lives and encouraging and speaking your gospel in the name of Jesus yes, Christ. Lord. God, I ask you to cover him with your guardian angels, God. Protect in the, the plane, yes. God, that's going across the country in the name of Jesus Christ, God. And Lord, we want to hear great testimony when he checks in with Simone. I want yes, him Lord. to share testimonies of faith and deliverance because that's what kingdom building is all about in the name yeah. of Jesus Christ. Be with him and guide him and bless him, God, and cover him and let him continue to be Thank blessed and everything that he do. In Jesus' name we pray. If yeah, you I believe like God with me, say amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Amen, man. I thank you so much. I feel his presence in here, man. I just thank you for this opportunity. I thank yeah. you, uh, Michael, for taking this time, coming back from New York, and just taking this moment right here on the Psalm of Gospel because this radio station and this show is changing the lives of people everywhere. So we thank you so much. What's your final word? Oh, man. God is so good. Continue to press in, stir up the gift, and do not give up. There will be haters, and the haters might be the ones that you love the most, but I tell you what, we serve a God who does the impossible. Yes. And I know being the one who did not have a father, I can call God my Abba Dad. Yeah. So if you could call out to him today in that same way, know this, that he is on your side. Wonderful. And you will never, ever fail in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you, Michael. And the video, you'll get a chance to watch this after watch being live with me. And, you know, tell everybody about the station, man. Safe travels to you. I want you to check in with Simone because, you know, we on all those different apps so we can call each other and say, hello, brother. Um, make sure hey. you check in with me once you get settled to let me know you got there safely. Send me the link. And we want people to continue to be a blessing to you. One more time, give that website, that account number, so people can pour a seed into you. Go ahead. www.agape gospel mission that's a g a p e g o s p e l m i s s i o n dot o r g slash old slash donate o l d slash d o n a t e my account number is five three zero michael clicks you'll see it right there you can give one time or monthly all for the glory of god and i'm so excited to see what god's gonna do wonderful thank you if michael you email me it's michael <laughs> M-Y-K-E-L at agapegospelmission.org. Let's get connected in Ghana and let's see life change. Amen. Thank you. Michael, safe travels to you. God bless you. Have a great one. I'll be in touch with you, okay? Thank you, sir. God bless you. You're welcome. My pleasure. Bye-bye.